Hello everyone, and welcome to another exciting commentary podcast. I'm Captain Logan. And I'm Eric. And today Eric and I are going to tackle the first episode of Amazon's The Tick, and this is currently the only episode of Amazon's The Tick. And we've been saying that we were going to do this since I moved in. That's right. Yeah, I don't know if anybody else knew that, but we have Now been, they know. Wanted to do a commentary for this for a long time. It's 26 minutes long. I don't know why we never sat down and did it's this. It's because the kind of show it is, we always think it's a, it's an hour long episode. Well, you think that that's I a, like I that. don't have that. I have no idea why we haven't sat down and done okay. this. But here I'm we, trying to give us now. But here we are. Uh, and it's been a while since we've seen this. Mm-hmm. Uh, Eric and I have both seen this four or five times, mm-hmm. and we keep showing it to people. Yep. And uh, I w- I wanted to make sure we get this out. And the last before. time we both watched it. Was the same time together. That's right. So we have actually watched this yes. together once, and um, this I'm sure will be a lightning fast experience for us because I'm sure we'll have 115 things we want to try to pack into this and we, less and we than have, half and an hour. We have hour. to get this out before the show drops because we have so many things to theorize about and and be like maybe they'll go here, maybe they'll go there. So this will immediately date as well. Yeah, but that but that's fine because uh, at least we get to do that kind of speculation knowing that this is not all we're getting from this, yeah. which is really exciting. So yeah, we want to make sure and get this out before the rest of the first season comes out. We don't have a date for that yet. We have no idea when that is coming. Hopefully I'm this next year, hoping, 2017. Uh, maybe, maybe around the same time as we got the pilot. Uh, th- this I can see this being another summer drop mm-hmm. for yeah. them, and, and that's what I'm kind of hoping for, because like, since they haven't announced uh, spring, I don't think we can expect it earlier than July yeah. or August, yeah. uh, but... But what? But whatever. I'll take it. I'm so excited that we're getting more of this. Yeah. Uh, it's a really big deal. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it and talk while we're watching it. Uh, if you want to watch it with us, make sure to go to Amazon Prime. That's the only way to watch it. And look up The Tick. Uh, there's just the one episode, as I said. Get it to timestamp zero and get ready to press play it when I say now. Eric, are you ready, sir? I'm ready. Here we go. Everybody, please press play right now. It's TV 14 for adult language and graphic violence. I don't know if I agree with that. Uh, graphic violence? Yeah, more like graphic idea of violence, right? Yeah, a lot of it's off screen. You know, smash his hand. Yeah. But we don't see that happen, really. So when I first watched this, I was super excited because his voice is immediately perfect. It's, yeah. It's perfect. And if you did an animated tick right now, He'd this is the yeah. voice you'd want. Yep. Yeah. And when I first reviewed this, I said, the voice is perfect, but I'm not sure about the whole package. Mm-hmm. And uh, I have changed my tune on that a lot. Neat! So, do you think this all gets explained in some way? This big Lego block thing that's going <laughs> to create the genesis of the superheroes? Uh, well, that's... Uh, again, it's been a while since I've seen this, but uh, that, that's just Superior ship, is it not? I guess you're right, but it, we say that's like the that's the dawn of the superheroes. Yeah. I also like that the, that the Tunguska event is the dawn of the superheroes. I think that's that's a, a fun neat idea. Thing. Yeah. Uh, I always like this this kind of uh, alternate history stuff. Mm-hmm. We're gonna see some really bad green screen here in a second. Yeah, the effects on this show aren't great, but they're Amazon, so like yeah, but it's fine. It, it, and it's it, part of the charm. Well, and some of it makes. I don't want to say the CW shows, but make shows like the CW look embarrassing for like some of their costumes and stuff. Yeah, like how good they're able to do. How is the terror scarier than any villain on the <laughs> CW shows? Uh, I think it's because uh, he's unpredictable and and weird, and he's an anachronism where you're in this silly looking world that's also because it's parroting this kind of dark, cynical superhero stuff. Um, you're not expecting that. But but you are expecting, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's this great juxtaposition where they can they can make him scary and hilarious all at the same time. So immediately, I don't buy Superior as a superhero that's existed for seventy years because he never changed his costume. You name me one superhero that doesn't have at least an embarrassing period of having a bad costume. Well, you don't know that he didn't have a period, and it's possible that he did, and that, that there was a lightning blue Superman suit <laughs> at some point. You Lightning don't know Superior. that. Is it Superior? It's Superior, okay. yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't want to confuse him with Superior. Well, is it the exact same costume? Supreme. Like It looks like they... it in all the pictures. Okay. I was I was looking at that. I wasn't. I was looking at you. I I, know. I thought the 
Um, I can see. It, was was the other costume gray like that? I thought the whole thing was red. In the no, first no, place. no, no, no. It's, it's gray. Okay, okay. I like. Uh, this is one of my favorite lines. It's a crater I made out of him. This is one of those cases where I kind of like using a real world person like Whoopi Goldberg, mm-hmm. uh, because you know usually with the tick, uh, we we. We don't do a lot of pop culture references and world. things like that. Yeah, but also like, uh, like, like, not at all realistic mm-hmm. and really out. Like every now and again, you'll bring up an actor or something. But by and large, it's a world that looks like ours, but it's just out of step. Mm-hmm. This is that, but I, but like, it's it's parroting uh, these like darker, more realistic shows. So I think for the, for this particular case, doing things like that is great. And it's also because it's alternate history. Mm-hmm. I mean, because you have that alternate history stuff in the background. It's kind of fun to have real stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the whole joke in this scene only plays when you have like surround sound or the volume's up real loud because the guy screaming, screaming in the, screaming ba- in the, in the background? background. Yeah, I didn't catch it the first time because I was watching on like a laptop. It was the first thing I laughed at. Oh, really? Uh huh. And I love that she's got a handprint on her yeah. shoulder. Yeah. What is this situation? What happened? It's funnier because you don't know. Yeah. This is such a consummate Edlin script. He's not lost his magic. No. He hasn't changed at all. He knows just what he's doing. Um, he is so in touch with the culture that he's able to take the tick and do exactly what he did with it in the mid-80s. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is make it a a direct parody, but a smart parody of what's really in right now with superhero stuff. Right. And I think it even acknowledges just inherently how popular superhero fiction is right now. Like, it would have been so easy to kind of phone this in, and of course, Edlin's not going to do that, but, like, Mm -hmm. this comes out because superheroes are popular. Yeah. But you wouldn't know it watching that, you know what I mean? Like, Well, and it's it's funny because this is riffing so much on Daredevil and the Tick comics riff so much on Miller's Daredevil. That's that's one of the things I love about it. Yeah. Uh, The kind of... Uh, conspiratorial nature of this, I think, is really smart. Mm. Uh, and just finally getting to see the tick as a full blown, like, long running serialized story is really exciting to mm-hmm. me. This was the second thing I laughed at. This is the first at. thing I laugh at. Ah, uh, the syphilis thing. Yeah, it's it's re- it's really funny. The Dodgers moved. <laughs> <laughs> This is uh, another. <laughs> the flag five is uh, another uh, uh, riff on the Fantastic Four, uh, and and they're the uh, Civic Minded Five again, mm-hmm. but not the Civic Minded Five. Which is curious because that's a thing that's in the comics, and they yeah. could have called it that. Um, but I think maybe they think that sounds uh, uh, that's too, too comic book and too maybe not jokey, just the wrong flavor. Yeah. Every everything in this, in the in the context of it, is is supposed to be is supposed to feel a little bit more understated, uh, but that's not the right word either. You know, uh, I'm so glad that we kept with a jazzy score. Mm. It sounds like the Tig. Yeah. I was really worried that people wouldn't accept this, uh, because of Warburton. Yeah, and how much people really loved that show, you know, because a lot of people discovered that. Yeah, and a lot of people. That's kind of the only take they know. Like they know there was a cartoon, but they, I don't. I think a lot of people didn't don't go back to the cartoon. Yeah, and a lot of the time when there's a live action thing that people like, people tend to dismiss cartoons out of hand without watching them first. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, that's the cartoon thing. It's not for me. Mm-hmm. It's not for adults. Um, that was, of course, much smarter. Than uh, than the other show because it was a sitcom mm-hmm. and this is cool too because we now have three tick shows which is a sentence I never thought I would say three completely different things that are three totally different things yep and this is already as smarter or smarter than the cartoon was mm-hmm. yeah no absolutely they said bad words <laughs> you can do that in this show. And I'm not going to dog on this for being yet another thing that's for adults and not really for kids. Because the comics are a little bit more adult. They definitely are. Yeah. That's kind of yeah. like the Ninja Turtle thing. Like, if we finally made something for adults with Ninja Turtles in, like, a 
live action or animated kind of thing. This is intended for that same kind of yeah. audience. So like I said, his performance has completely grown on me now. Yeah. And I love that he's in the background and that Arthur is uh, is our real protagonist so mm-hmm. far anyway. Yeah. Uh, it's a really... It's it's a good character piece. Like like as um, as ludicrous and silly uh, as or not silly, but like you know absurd as as some of the situation gets and the flashback and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, he's a sad, tragic character. Yeah, and I actually feel for him, and I think his performance is just brilliant. I think he's my favorite Arthur. Oh yeah, mine too, easily. And at least on screen so far. This costume's growing on me. I still don't love it. I can live with it at yeah. this point. Yeah. So Eric and I uh, go around saying meat like that. Yeah, all the meat time. all the time. And there are about four or five things. This is twenty six minutes long. Yeah, there's a we couple of things. We quote this uh, yeah. of recent things. We quote this more than anything. Yep. Uh, we'll cross that bridge once we after we burned it. We yep. say that all the time. Finesse. I think we've we've kind of we've said I, before. I, I don't say finesse. I think you say finesse. I've done it once or twice. Now, to be fair, the tick is a thing I just tend to quote a lot. Yeah, and this. Being an Evelyn script, only one episode, <laughs> and part of it's the delivery, right? Yeah, of of cross that bridge, and uh, and and I have a tendency to whenever you do like a weird ending on a video, I'll I'll do the I I am it, am the tick. There it is. Uh now that is the one thing because I because if you go back and watch the the uh, and and like I don't. Entirely agree with myself at this point. When you go back and watch, he's doing the eye twitch thing. Yes, I love the later on music, or that the kid will do. And that was the thing I didn't catch until the second viewing. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you notice that the tick trying to understand the eye twitch thing does it back to him? No, I mean I didn't catch it this time. If I have noticed that before, yeah, he starts doing it back to him. Uh, that's funny. Sorry, I interrupted. So like, you. that's a thing they're doing intentionally. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, but anyway, so um. I, I totally forget what I was talking about. Um, oh yeah, so when, when I when I reviewed this initially, mm-hmm. um, I was I was really like I said on the fence about his performance, and uh, the one thing that really got me in the, it, initially uh, was the way he says "I am the tick" the first time. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love that. He is really putting his own spin on it, and it's the closest thing we've ever had to comic book tick. He is. He is deranged mm-hmm. in a way that we've never seen him on screen before. Um, the most Edlin thing in the script is the toy spaceship, and immediately following, <laughs> the actual spaceship that is of that is the toy he's playing with falls on his dad. So he's a pilot. Yes. Is there anything to that? You think there's going to be some kind of thematic something with that? Like, he's very clearly a pilot. I think it's the irony of a he's pilot killed having... by a spacecraft. Okay. I didn't but know yeah, there was more to it because than that, this pilot. is... Well, well, we don't know yet. Like, like I, I like all the questions you're asking about what we'll fill in. Because mm-hmm. this is serialized. Mm-hmm. It's not one-and-done stories. I expect yep. a lot... Of, so, like... You're right that there's maybe a little bit of a mystery to what exactly Superion is, and I expect, you know, I've got I've got theories about that. I mean, I I expect we'll we'll, we'll learn that, but I also think well, that we, you could well, easily thought... you could easily not ever tell us very much about where he came from and stuff, and you wouldn't feel like it was and no, it was missing. No. It just it's interesting, it's interesting that we start the Don Superheroes, and I'm like, are we going to explain that? What goes on from that point forward where we get more superheroes? But but we we've talked. About- I, to, I mean, I would assume it's just the Superman thing where it's like you have one and then and then other people follow in 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 its in its footsteps. Yeah, that's where the first one shows up. Um, but but we we've talked about if Superior is in league with the Terror, and that's what I think could be happening, or maybe he's under his thumb somehow. Yeah, or something. Yeah. Uh, so or if he's have, that dumb. We're not really sure how dumb he is. He could be that dumb. I don't think so. I think he's probably a master manipulator. The terror? Or superior? Well, the terror definitely, but I yeah. think even even superior is superior, I think is is, is is pulling the wool over people's eyes. Um I think I think he's he, he he's the all consuming powerful being who mm-hmm. has um duped people into thinking that he is altruistic and when he's really just out for himself. Right. Yeah. Um or and and that would be the version that is in league with the terror. Yeah. 
or, or, or he's a coward and like he lets him go if like he agrees, like that kind of a thing. Yeah. Yeah, now the the way they're playing that performance, I kind of don't think it's that necessarily, mm. but I also don't know if that guy knows. You know, the guy playing him. Yeah. So I hope that doesn't end up being like a light switch, you know, a change kind thing. of thing. So this is one of my favorite lines coming up. Or I think it's here. I think it's, uh, or do we flash back and then cut back? We do, and okay. I really like that. Yeah. I like that the flashbacks are informing, the flashbacks are very much in scene. Yeah. Uh, this this is uh, this is not the kind of flashbacking where we're uh, just like looking for an excuse to go to mm-hmm. go back there and like encroaching on the narrative. Uh, it's exactly how you would do it in prose, um, right? Where we need this to understand the scene that's happening in the present, right? <laughs> Captain Atlas. Oh, I'm glad we're, I, I, I I'm excited about looking at this in subtitles because uh, I haven't done that yet. And I love uh, this ship. I didn't know what any of these superheroes' names were. I love that it's a T. Where's it's my mega blocks? Block I don't know how it flies. I these are not questions to be asked. And I like <laughs> these guys. These guys look really cool too. Yeah. <clears throat> and they've got big T's on their helmets. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the terror is such a presence. I love Jackie Earl Haley. I could not yeah. believe when he was cast. You said you can't see him in the face. Uh, He's got he's got a him. he's got a way of holding his mouth that is instantly recognizable to me. Oh boy, that look. But this is what I wanted when when Arrow first starts and I'm complaining about costumes. This is what I wanted. That's great. His costume is great. Yeah, it is. Look I at the love shoulders. that helmet. You guys, look at the shoulders, dude. Look at yeah, how padded out they are. Uh, uh, Kelly Jones does that with Batman sometimes with the with the cape, and I love all this continuity. We're seeing the guy taking the picture that's on Time Magazine. Yep, <laughs> that's the graphic violence we were talking. Oh, we do see yeah. it step by that. that yeah. There it is. There's the graphic violence, Eric. Yeah, this this we say all the time too. <laughs> you got nothing. We say it all. Of, look at the contacts. Have you ever looked real close to contact lenses? Just how. The weird yellow eyes. Oh, the yellow eyes! Look at the yellow eyes. And this ice cream thing, this is the second most Edlin thing in this script. The comedic timing of that. He's in one scene. And he's great. It's, it's a minute and a half. I kind of... There's a part of me that hopes that it is like five episodes before we see him again. That'd be cool. Okay, did you see what they did with Time Magazine there? Hold on. You poor broken man. That I love that. That's great. Just how like cold and emotionless yeah. <laughs> that is. Uh, do you see the M behind the terror's head? Looks like devil horns. Oh no, I didn't see that. Um, it's not the kind of thing I usually talk about on the channel. It's a Trump thing, right? But Trump was named Man of the Year this year, or Person of the Excuse me, Person of the Year this year, and a lot of people have been saying that Time did that on purpose with him, where it's got it the like M the that looks horns. like devil horns. And it it's really interesting going back just a few months with this, where they clearly did that on purpose here. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, so, uh, some people are speculating that the tick might end up just being a figment of Arthur's imagination through the whole series. This is the scene that tells me it cannot yeah. be. Arthur is not here. Yep. So unless Arthur is imagining that going on right now, which is too much of a stretch. Mm. But there may be some kind of connection between the two of them. This is also immediately my favorite dot, but yes. that's not hard. Yes, oh, absolutely. Now, she's a totally different character. Mm. Uh, in every other version of her, she is really uh, dry and emotionless. And has this like uh, this kind of this kind of no-nonsense, no-smile, dry wit... Like a like a Daria, kind of a character. Yeah, exactly. And I don't mind that she's not because uh, somebody's got to be kind of a normal person in the show. Mm-hmm. And I, I also think we're going to see a lot of her. I I really like his delivery here, where um, when you're talking to someone that's a conspiracy theorist and does not believe in something, uh-huh. and there's the obvious evidence that everyone always says, like this is why what you're saying can't be true. His reaction is exactly the reaction those people have. Where she says, they found his teeth. He goes, really? His teeth? Like, it's the dumbest thing. Like, of course it's faked. Like, that kind of a thing. I really... 
that feels really realistic. It's to so me. believable. Yeah, that's. And in this show, I've talked to a lot of people, or I've talked to some people that are conspiracy theorists, and that is exactly how they react when you're like, "Well, what about this? Really? That?" And can we just say they get an incredible amount done in 26 minutes? Yeah, absolutely. This is a real, real dense episode. And this is one of the better pilots I've seen, just as a pilot. Yeah. It's great. Like, I don't think it has pilotitis at all. It feels like the first chapter of something. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's got that Netflix model figured yep. out. Again, even as it's making fun of some well, of Well, and it's stuff. interesting because it, it, it's not written like a pilot. Um, yeah. This doesn't feel like something you would write, let me see if this takes off. This feels like something you write, and then you go write the rest of it, and hope that it all gets made. Which is why it has to get made. This can't be all we ever get of this show. And yep. I'm so glad it's getting made. I was on pins and needles waiting. Yeah. Because it's just too good. So this is a perfect example of an actor he, who knows he's in a comedy and a character who doesn't. Mm. And that is, of, of course, you know, a major element of of the Arthur character, in, you know, initially. Right. Uh, and this is a... This is a real interesting reinvention of that. Um, and also, I, I love just seeing... Okay, that's the thing that always cracks me up. Ages? Super database? Th that you would... That in a superhero database... You would type in superhero? You would type in the word superhero? Yeah. I don't really understand that. If you're Googling it, sure. Yeah. Uh, Edlin keeps reinventing his own character. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a lot of respect for him for the, the risks he takes in doing that. Every the, time he does it, he tries something really, really different the with tick, it. The unlike Spider-Man, but like Batman, is endlessly reinterpretable. But maybe only by Edlin. Maybe yeah. only by the guy who... Because yeah. at the core, he's always still kind of the same thing. Mm -hmm. uh, like, there, you know, there's different degrees of the, of, of, of the mania and the... Um, like, like, his... Uh, sorry, this scene is really... Potentially important later, yeah. later on, and I'm, I'm I'm interested to see how it ends up playing. What exactly is going on there? Is that just him dreaming and and, re and like things mixing together? And is yeah, we're just in the dream. He's a child. But, but we're told earlier that he he heard voices. He's yeah. heard voices. And again, it can't be the show telling, like trying to make us guess whether or not the tick is real because they keep he going to, to hear. Here. And Edlin is too. Oh, I, I love that sting. Uh, That's a good one. The, the, he, he's too deliberate in the way he's plotting this. Uh, but anyway, I was talking about something with the tick earlier, but I, but I want to mention that, yeah. <laughs> Beatling that's, that's so away funny. at your dunghill of contraband. Um, so I have uh, a little bit of uh, information on this that hardly anybody else would have because uh, I've gotten to look at some of the script of this show. Um, I, I have uh, a couple of props from this scene in my possession. Um, one of these, do you know which one of these guys... I, you got it from? I don't. I don't, because I, I can't get a, a, a close enough look at their faces. Mm -hmm. But I do have a headshot. Um, but anyway, so I have uh, oh, that guy? some of the bullet casings. And uh, in and I also got uh, some pages of script, and this scene is, is in there. And um, when he says... Uh, when he says w wicked men, uh, they do... In the script... It's the same way it almost always is in the tick, where he just says, "Wicked men, you face the tick." This is a thing they changed on the day, and it's such a smart change. Uh, when he's up on the, s <laughs> when he's up on, I caused that explosion, I did and that destiny too. Meant, meant for me to do that too. Um, but no, when he's uh, you know up on that uh, roof and, and on that silo, and he jumps down, mm -hmm. um, and, and he and he yells, uh, "Wicked men!" That's a thing they changed on the day. Oh. In the script, it just says "Wicked Men, you face the tick." His yelling it several times—that's that was either Sarah Finowitz's idea or the director on the day, or I don't know. But there's the 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 opening shot from from the cartoon show. Yep, and that's deliberate. It's got to be deliberate. It's the same sound. Yeah, it's the exact same sound. So uh, Ben Edlin has famously written this scene now four times mm -hmm. in four different ways. Uh, the big thing I miss is the the, the uh, bed. or the couch. The couch turns into a bed, but he still does. But the he's written that trigger three thing. times. He's written that three times, which is why I miss it. Uh, but this is really cool. It's it, it it is you know for this Arthur. Um, so he walks in. The first thing he sees is uh, 
oh, cool, he's, like, keeping track of crime stuff on his mm -hmm. wall. One of the things we've, we've discussed is whether, because we talk about in the show that this city doesn't have superheroes, but it's not like superheroes stop existing. It's not like The Incredibles or something like that. Superheroes still exist. <laughs> are people staying out... What is it with Edlin and bus stations? Sorry, go ahead. Are the, uh... Are superheroes not in this city because they know they're not supposed to be there because it's bad and being run by the bad guy? Or is it... And probably not, because everybody thinks he's... Or is it he's... because they think it's quaint and safe that they don't need a superhero? Because there doesn't seem to be super crime happening in the city. That's a really good point. I... Uh, and, and I, and I, I, I hope, love that one. And I hope that's the thing we elaborate on. Yeah. The omelet is huge! One thing I really needed was a couple more viewings of this to get away from, and that's not one of them, but to get away from lines that Warburton had. Mm-hmm. That he, that he repeats again. Because one uh, criticism I lobbed at it initially was uh, too many repeated lines. Right. Uh, but they're cleverly inserted in, in, in different contexts. I don't think it's Edlin not being able to come up with new things for the tick to say. I think it's part of that reinvention. Mm. Where it's like... It, it, it's he says it different. The core of that character is the same, but there's these subtle nuances mm. where he's different. And some of it all is almost catchphrasey, where it's like, no, the Tick says these. These are things the Tick says. Mm -hmm. I also like this... The speech starts well, gets away from him. <laughs> uh, this is, yeah. <laughs> now, this is a thing Pat, the Patrick Warburton version would have, would have said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the most comic book thing he says. That very big explosion. So I did that too. Um, I love this nasally thing that Sarah Finowitz is doing with his voice. Um, he's, of course, British and he's faking an American yes. accent. And uh, he has come You've never up heard with. Him normal, right? I have. Have you? Uh, but it's been a while. Uh, yeah, in, in research, because I didn't know him, in, in, in researching uh, before this started, I, I, I listened to uh, a couple of interviews and talk show things and stuff. Um, he has created a real specific voice for this. At last, we'll have a Revenge of the Jedi. At last, we'll... I don't know if he's done most, much voice work, but I think he would be such a good voice actor. He's Darth Maul. Oh, that's right, that's right, yeah, that's right. Yeah, like three lines. It makes... Oh, but I was saying, it would make so much sense for him to do a lot of voice work. I don't know him as a voice actor. I know the, him mostly from Simon The man stuff. modulates. And he's in Guardians. I don't think you could... Uh, I think if you listen to that... And you didn't see his face, you'd have no idea who it was. Even if uh, you knew him really well. I like... One of the things I like about her is that she's that Edlin, like, more old school... Th like, this is not... She is not a reference to anything we've got in cinema right now. She's Blofeld. She's a Bond villain. She's... It's, it's pulling old stuff, too. Just like in the comics, even in the 80s, he was pulling from Dick Tracy. Here, yeah. Even in modern day, he's pulling from, like, 60s James Bond kind of stuff. And it's still a comic book thing. He still lets yeah. it be inspired by superhero comic stuff. Yeah. But it looks like a gritty Netflix show. Yeah. I don't know how much they looked at Daredevil, but man, it feels like a, a direct parody of Daredevil. Yeah. I love this suit. It's great. A everything I don't like about uh, with the Tick suit, they have yeah. uh, they have made up for with Arthur's suit. And, the, and, it's, and it's really different from anything we've seen before. It's not white anymore. No. When the visor comes down, it looks kind of... Uh, like, 50s space sci-fi-y? Um, I don't know if that's intentional. It reminds me a lot of what they did with uh, Night Owl and Watchmen. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, this is... This is this is the best I think his costumes looked. I'm also hoping that we get a tick speech at the end of every episode. Yeah. Because even... Even it being a serialized thing where it's chapters instead of episodic... Uh, uh, stories, I think you could. It, it would kind of help to you know hold them together with that formula. Like no matter what you did in the middle, mm. somehow or rather we find a way to get a six speech at, at the end there. I still don't think he's he looks big enough. Yeah, that's always real hard because the tick's supposed to be These like are real CG. It doesn't seven and a half, me, eight but... foot tall. Do you think? I thought it looked really good. It does there. 
when they come out, when they come out. Much. so they come in shooting. Arthur's dad dots the dots the the sidekick in this series. Well, no, did you miss the part where the suit's bulletproof? I mean, yes. Yeah, the suit is bulletproof. I mean, we are told the suit is bulletproof. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's the thing. I mean, unless he shoots just directly at his face. I bet uh, you each Barry Sonnenfeld is still producing. The, the, the Tick Brain Trust is, is yeah. all... Uh, well, we fight, Fister up, is still in there. Uh, that one guy that we looked up who wrote, like, two episodes or three episodes of the animated series and one episode of the live action... But was a producer on live action? He, he's a producer he's on this. He's still here, yep. yep. They've kept it real close to... Yep. To the vast... In addition to all of those people seemingly are able to keep evolving and changing with yeah. the tick. Miss Lint. Her name is Miss Lint. This is a thing I just never thought would happen. I, like, it, it is a freaking dream come true for me. Yeah. And Side I can kick. almost be positive that we'll get more than one season. Yeah. And that's a thing you... you, you definitely wouldn't have thought was, was certain. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's not certain, but... This was so well received. This gets at least two seasons, right? I would hope so. On network television, you, you can't be sure of anything. But on Amazon. But on Amazon, it probably gets at least two. Yeah. You're probably right. And I'm hoping that they write a real tight story that feels like a miniseries, so if it doesn't get a second season, it's not a big deal. Mm-hmm. And if it gets a second season, they can you know, you know, know tell a different story. Yeah, they're not telling a five-season story, and they get two of them. I want to see this show do some iteration of Chair Phase. Yeah, we've talked about that. And whether or not you'd even want to see it and if it would be possible. But and what does this universe's version of Batman Wells slash uh, Deflator Mouse look like? I do not think they'll do that. You don't that. think they'll do it? I don't think they'll go there. I think, that t- I think they will. Maybe that's season two thing. Maybe that's not a season one thing. Or they make some reference to it, or we get like a one-shot character mm-hmm. or something. But I don't think they'll make like mainstays that are those. Because, again, he's drawing a lot more from comics. And they're not in the comics. Especially tonally. Mm-hmm. And that was like... We think of those as big tables of the tick because they're in both of those shows, mm-hmm. but you didn't have any version of those in the card. In, 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 excuse me, in the uh, in the comic book. And, and this is a series that could lend itself to Chainsaw Vigilante. Chainsaw Vigilante would be great. Uh, I really want. I think Paul the Samurai is a thing you could do. Yeah, uh, and I think that's just, that would be a you great could season do him two real thing. Real dramatically, and I think that would be a really great season two Still thing. Silly, but dramatic because we did Electra in the second season. Well, and Oedipus is a thing you could do. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, and, I think, and I think I think that'd be really fun too. So, I really want you said Paul the Samurai. I really want them to do Paul the Samurai where he keeps cutting himself, but it's shot and like and scored really dramatically every time he has to like cut himself. Like it's a real tragic moment. That would be really funny. And there should be talk about like whether or not the bread gets stale and like like there's all kinds of amusing things you could do with that. But in trying to make that look like dark and gritty. I don't know. Uh, the forehead should be the big crime boss. Zipper neck. I want uh, zipper neck. <laughs> Look, it's um, that graphic violence. I want zipper neck. Yeah, but you don't want to actually see what's in the. You no, know. no. <laughs> um, I the, the uh, red eye is a thing you could do. I think um, it's possible that Chairface would be like a season two. Like if we're gonna do the terror for season one. You could do Chairface, like he could be the villain of season two, like that kind of thing. Yeah, and if we're gonna go serialized, I would I would expect a big a big bad every time. Yeah, and and he's he's a Whedon alum, um, and I think yeah. Supernatural also works that way. While he's on that show, he is the big bad each season kind of a thing. You kind of gotta wonder if he is well, not wonder. You have to expect uh, Barry Hubris. There's just yeah. there's no way Barry Hubris is not in this show. Yeah. I, I'll be real surprised. If and most likely Patrick Warburton. That's that's what I want. Yeah, I'm not the only person saying that. I, uh, I, I think I think that feels like a no brainer. Warburton could have been Superior. Yeah, but I'm glad we didn't start with him. Uh, you wouldn't want him to be in the first episode of the show. No, no. Uh, Sarah Finowitz needs to be able to step way far away from that, mm-hmm. uh, and, I, and I and I think he does that really effectively. Uh, now that I've allowed myself to get away from that. There were a lot of people saying, I don't want live-action Tick without Warburton. And that wasn't me. I was really open to it. Mm-hmm. But I didn't feel like he had a he had a take. No, it was that I didn't understand his take. What he was doing was too sophisticated for me. It's too subtle. Um, I'm going to go that far. I don't even know if it's subtle. I, it's just... 
it's it's really out there, mm. uh, and it was almost it was almost too tick. Like I didn't I didn't expect it. Mm-hmm. He gets the tick, it, maybe better than I do. Like he just he just gets it. He he takes the comic book version and puts it on the screen in in, in a way that. Makes it really clear he he gets the core of that character. Mm-hmm. Patrick War- Warburton did a more like TV version of it. Yeah, a more childish version. Like like he talks about how like he views the tick as a child. Every time he experiences something, it's the first time he's experiencing something. Yeah, he's just completely oblivious to everything. Yeah, yeah. Um, oblivious. To, oblivious has been childish. Yeah, this guy has a screw loose. Mm-hmm. Um, it has all the same stuff where he, he. I'm sure. I'm sure he is. You know. Uh, like probably a couple hundred years old, and probably thinks his costume isn't a costume. I think maybe he even says that. I can't. I can't remember if that line's in there. Or I not. don't remember that line being in there, but I might be wrong. Warburton could be Big Shot. He'd be a great Big Shot. I see. I don't want Warburton to be anything but Barry Hubris. I just, just you know, the 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 other tick is is really the thing to do with with, with Warburton if he comes in. But you're right. Um, Big Shot. No, but you could do Big Shot. That was in the comics first. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, um, anything else you wanted to say about it right now, where we're at? Do you think this all comes to a head and does the... Here's what's going to happen. We're going to get the end of season two. It's going to be issue 13, or 12, or whatever. Oh, no. Oh, no. And no, 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 no. Stop. No, we can't have that. It'll come to the same climax with the terror and tear face and, and Barry Hubris, and then, and then it'll, it'll end again. Wait, are you telling me that the last episode of this show ends on a cliffhanger with them driving away in a tick cycle? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't read the last issue of Tick. I don't know what happens. I just know it's a cliffhanger. Uh, they do that in the video game, too. There's like there's a, there's a static picture that I think is just lifted straight from that comic. It's just them driving away in a tick <laughs> cycle. We can't get away from that. Anyway, uh, everybody, thanks so much for listening. We sure appreciate it. And uh, let us know what you think of this pilot. And uh, especially, we, and we've talked about this before, but this is, of course, you're finally doing a commentary. Um, if you've, uh, you know, now we've had a few months, if you've seen this a couple times, uh, let us know if you are digging it more or still digging it. And uh, in We're the digging meantime, it less. yeah, yeah. I can't uh, imagine anyone keeps watching this and like likes it less each time, but I'm sure somebody has that. Yeah, uh, I have not talked to anybody that just doesn't like this. Ne- neither have I. Um, some people that certainly had reservations about his performance, like I did mm-hmm. um, first time around, but a lot of people, it's, it's, it's grown on just like it has me. So Anyway, um, we will see you again uh, down the line for more uh, uh, TikTok when the new show finally drops. TikTok. And um, and if I uh, would you like a TikTok for your for your so breath? so I I said that uh, like like partly because that that name as a show has been kind of rattling around in my brain. Um, at some point, uh, the Jeff and I are going to sit down and do commentaries for all the animated show, mm-hmm. and uh, we're going to do live action too. But you and I have done that now, uh, so I don't know if we'll actually end up doing that, but we might. It would be it would be real different. He'd have more to say than I would. Sitting down and doing them separately. And, and you wouldn't be delirious by the end of in it. In four and a half hours. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, uh, but if we do that, that show will be called TikTok. So that's why that happened. Anyway, uh, thanks for listening, folks. We sure appreciate it. I am Captain Logan. I'm Eric. And we'll see you again next time.